Hi guys and welcome to U Wrench. Today we're working on the uh, Grand Caravan and we're doing a replacement of the rear brake caliper. Now the one we're working on today is the fifth generation 2008 through 2020, uh, although this probably applies to the older model as well and of course for the uh, Chrysler Town and Country. So let's get it done. Okay, so uh, just for uh, disclosure's sake, uh, I've actually already removed this uh, caliper, I've reassembled it, and uh, you can see I've actually removed the uh, the rear brake uh, pad here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take through the exact process that I had. Basically, this was uh, clamped on with uh, so much force, uh, as we'll cover in, in just a second, uh, it was actually very hard to get this caliper off, so I'm not going to put it back in. Uh, but what I'll do is I'll show you exactly the uh, the techniques that I use to, uh, to get this off and uh, give you a couple of tips on, on how to remove it if you're struggling. So as we know, we're going to be replacing the uh, the caliper. Um, it's going to be coming off completely and uh, either replaced with a brand new one or a refurbished one or whatever the case may be. Uh, we know we're going to have to uh, detach the uh, the handbrake cable. Uh, I've just done it here. I'm going to take you through the uh, the stages for it in just, uh, just a second. It can be quite uh, tricky. Uh, but basically, you want to leave this uh, assembly all still uh, bolted on. Uh, if you know that you're uh, definitely changing the caliper, you know this has got to come off, leave, leave all this uh, bolter still on, so it's almost like one of the kind of first stages of the process, if you like. Uh, so okay, so looking at the rear caliper setup on the, uh, the Grand Caravan here, uh, you will notice uh, during this video I've actually removed the, uh, the uh, rear pad. Uh, it won't affect the, uh, the process of the, um, uh, the video at all, uh, but we've had to do that because we've had a, a couple of issues with this particular caliper, which is actually going to be uh, replaced with a brand new one today, uh, hence this video. Uh, but this won't affect anything, but obviously you will have a, a brake pad fitted in the uh, in the rear there. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, take a quick look at, um, at the uh, various components and the, uh, the bolts that attach these uh, onto the hub, and then we'll look at uh, removing those uh, one by one. So essentially what you've got here is you've got the actual uh, caliper uh, itself, that's uh, this, this section right here, and then you've got what's called a carrier, uh, which is this uh, outer section uh, right here. And you can see here we've got a, a bolt at the back just there and that connects the uh, caliper, goes through the caliper and actually uh, goes into a slide pin uh, inside the uh, carrier right here. Uh, so that's uh, one of the bolts that we're going to be uh, replacing we have that top and bottom. And additionally just to the side of that here, uh, this is the uh, carrier bolts. This is what's uh, connecting the, uh, the carrier frame uh, onto the hub. Uh, so that will be removed uh, once we've got that out of the way. So for the uh, rear bolt here, um, on the um, Grand Caravan we're working on today, it's a size 13. Obviously that will vary if you're working on a different type of car. So you can get yourself quite a long uh, wrench. And you'll notice that as this bolt goes through, there's actually a, a second uh, kind of nut that sits in the middle there. And you might find you'll have to uh, counter hold this um, with a uh, spanner uh, if it starts to spin. Usually you can crack them off without that moving. So let's take a quick look. That's not too bad. But often you'll find it will uh, crack off and then as you're starting to undo it this one in the uh, in the centre here will start to turn as well. If it does just get the uh, correct size spanner on there to, uh, to counter hold it. Uh, so that's, uh, that's it. So we'll just get that uh, unzipped now. And then come down to the, uh, the lower bolt in exactly the same position and just do exactly the same thing uh, down here, let's get that one removed as well. So once the uh, two bolts are out, top and bottom, for the caliper, you, you should find you've got the movement there, and you should just be able to uh, manipulate it and move it uh, out of the way, obviously leaving the uh, the carrier still bolted uh, to the hub, and the uh, the pads uh, will still be in place as well. Uh, so that will allow you to get the uh, the caliper to this this position right here. Now uh, a good um, idea when you're working with the, uh, the caliper and you want to set it to one side, rather than just kind of let it hang down, uh, which is going to put a strain on, the, uh, on your brake lines and your handbrake cable, is to get yourself a uh, cable tie and just cable tie it to something that's convenient. So on this, in this particular example, on this Dodge Grand Caravan, we've got this uh, great uh, spring uh, access right here. So uh, a nice cable tie around there, cable tie that up into there and that'll keep that out of the way for us. So next we need to remove the two um, carrier bolts here on the rear uh, on the Dodge Caravan we're working, Grand Caravan we're working on today. They are size 18s. There we go. So remember obviously you've got one of these at the top and one of these at the bottom, uh, so we're going to get both of these removed. 
I want to have a quick uh, discussion about the um, the rear brake line. If you're uh, replacing the uh, the caliper on your car, you should definitely replace the uh, the rear uh, brake line here at the same time. Uh, what can tend to happen uh, with these brake lines uh, over time is uh, some of them have uh, like a, a metal spring uh, that can corrode inside and others just get a kind of a build up of a, a gunk uh, over time so what, what happens is you start off with a, a pipe that might be this wide and over time you get a build up of gunk in there and it, and it will constrict and get smaller and smaller and smaller and uh, what happens then it kind of acts like a, a one-way valve so when you press the brake pedal down and it forces the brake fluid into the caliper under pressure uh, no matter, you know, that hole could be tiny, it will still force it in there, no problem at all. But when you release the brake pedal, uh, obviously it's only the uh, kind of the pressure of the caliper releasing that allows the um, uh, brake fluid to flow back uh, into the pipe rather than being forced back under pressure. So it's only really forced into the caliper under pressure and just, um, just kind of released, uh, not under pressure if that makes any sense. So it acts like a one-way valve, you'll push it through, uh, all the pressure will be in there and it won't be able to, uh, to release because it can't get through the other little hole uh, that it could get through when you forced it through. Uh, so that's something definitely worth uh, bearing in mind. If you're doing a caliper replacement, definitely uh, replace this line at the same time. The lines are a lot cheaper than the calipers and it's just not worth uh, you know, not doing that, that part, uh, if that makes any sense. You're going to have to disconnect it anyway to physically re uh, remove the caliper, so you might as well get a new one of these on at the same time. Okay, so next we're going to be replacing the uh, the brake line here with a nice brand new one. Uh, note, I've uh, got a couple of little clips uh, for the, uh, the sensor, uh, which runs through a separate wire just here. Uh, the new replacement comes with that, this is a non-genuine uh, non one. And uh, as we are in this instance going to be replacing the, uh, the caliper with a brand new one, uh, we're going to detach the, uh, the brake line from uh, up here at the, uh, at the top. Uh, if you're intending on using your, your old brake line, uh, which I don't recommend, uh, but if you are and you need to attach it onto your um, your new caliper, uh, then obviously you can uh, undo the bolt uh, on this end uh, instead, and so you can just bolt the, uh, the new one straight back on. Uh, like I said before, that's not recommended. If you're replacing the caliper, definitely replace the line. Uh, so this is the end you ideally want to be looking at attacking. Okay, so here is the, uh, the new caliper uh, right here. Um, so as we know, we're going to... Um, uh, be disconnecting the, uh, the brake line soon and uh, we, we want to leave the brake line uh, disconnected for, for as, as short a uh, time as possible. Obviously the longer you leave it uh, detached for the more fluid you're going to lose. Uh, so what we'll do um, in preparation for, for this before we detach it uh, from the car, uh, we'll attach our um, brake line um, our brand new brake line, uh, which we have right here. Uh, we'll actually attach this uh, onto the uh, the caliper right here, so that this is ready to connect to the car, uh, so we can get them swapped over as quickly as we can. So hopefully your new caliper will come uh, with the uh, the new um, bolt. Uh, this is a special bolt. Actually, it has a uh, a hole drilled in the uh, the end of it there to allow the fluid to flow through, and another one on the side there, so the uh, brake fluid can actually flow through the bolt. And uh, hopefully it will come with uh, two uh, new washers as well. So now we're going to grab a torque wrench and just um, torque this up to spec, uh, which is 47 newton meters, uh, which is 35 foot pounds. So next we're going to uh, locate your uh, brake fluid reservoir uh, here. You see this one's quite dirty, uh, so I'm just going to give this one a, a quick um, a spray over and a bit of a clean up uh, before we remove the lid. Okay, and then we'll just remove the, uh, the lid carefully. Uh, the reason that we do that um, what I'm going to do is I'm just put that over there and just catch any fluid that might come out, which is unlikely in this instance. Let's pop that to one side. Now the reason you should give it a clean is obviously you don't want any contaminants getting into the brake fluid. So I'll just unclip the, uh, the uh, two uh, little clips here uh, for your sensor. So I'm just putting a drip tray down, so obviously we're going to lose a little bit of uh, brake fluid uh, when we disconnect this here. 
And uh, I've sprayed a little bit of um, a plus gas, uh, which is a kind of a, a penetrating fluid, uh, just in case any of these connectors are a little bit stiff or rusty. Uh, you can use kind of WD-40 or something like that. Just make sure you dab off the, uh, the excess, obviously you don't want uh, any contaminating your, your fluid. Okay, so next we've got a little um, a U, kind of U-shaped uh, com compression clip that just sits in here. Uh, so we'll just pop that out and that should allow us to release the hose. And then uh, remove the old caliper, put that to one side. Okay, when you come to fit the uh, the brake hose, an uh, important thing to, uh, to note is that you've got like a hexagonal uh, head and, that, and you've got the same on the, uh, on the bracket. And on this, uh, on one side of it, uh, it's actually a um, much less, less pronounced uh, point. I don't really see that. You see the point sticking out quite a long way, all the way around, but on this one hardly sticks out at all. Uh, the bracket's exactly the same. The reason for that is to ensure that you put this on in the uh, correct direction, so just bear that in mind. And then the clip back in. Give it a good dry off and make sure you haven't got uh, any leaks and just keep an eye on that uh, and check it towards the end there when you've got everything back together as well uh, just to make sure everything is nice and tight there. And now use the, uh, the little clips here, just pop your, uh, your uh, little uh, grommets back into place uh, for, your, uh, for your sensor. So next, going back to your carrier, uh, your uh, new carrier should come with the, um, these little uh, brake shims, uh, so we put these in now. So before we put the, uh, the carrier uh, back on, um, we've got these, uh, these little um, slide shims that the uh, ends of the uh, pad sit into. So we're going to put a little bit of a brake grease uh, just into those, uh, just to ensure we've got good lubrication for the pads. So just align your uh, carrier uh, with the, uh, the bolt holes and uh, get your, uh, your two bolts, uh, get them starting to uh, screw in. I'm going to grab the uh, torque wrench and uh, we're going to do these up to uh, 100 newton meters, uh, which is 74 foot pounds. Next we're going to put our uh, brake pads in place, uh, unfortunately we're having to put these old rather scabby worn out brake pads back on temporarily because we're actually going to be filming a full uh, rear disc and pad removal video uh, for this in just a couple of weeks so all this will have to be stripped down again. Hopefully you'll be fitting nice new pads. Uh, what I'm going to do, if you are already fitting your old pads, uh, I'm going to do the, uh, the areas where these um, pads uh, sit in the, uh, the carriers and they kind of slide backwards and forwards. What I'm going to do is just going to clean this area uh, up a little bit. Uh, you can do it with a little Dremel tool if you've got one. Just be careful not to, uh, to uh, take too much back. Uh, steel brush if you've got one. Uh, or uh, you can just use a screwdriver as I am here. These aren't actually too bad. Uh, but just get the, uh, the tips of them all nice and clean uh, before you put them back in. 
Uh, so next we're just going to add a little bit of brake grease to the uh, the areas uh, which are going to make contact with these uh, with these sliding pins. Uh, just be careful when you're using uh, grease around um, brake pads because uh, the actual uh, kind of pad itself uh, they can be um, absorbent and obviously you suck grease into them uh, that could be in there for uh, weeks and of course you're not going to be uh, <laughs> stopping your car anytime soon so just be uh, wary of that that's what you want to do just a little area where you know that they're going to, uh, to be touching these pins uh, just a little bit of grease uh, just in those areas but be careful around the faces of the pads so when we're ready just going to uh, pop the pads into situ like that and their little uh, slider pins there and that's sorry the little slider shims and they can do exactly the same pop the rear one in as well Another little thing you can do, uh, it's not so much needed these days because they do tend to come with these um, these little uh, pads stuck on them, uh, but to help stop it binding, just where so you know that the caliper is going to stick, uh, you can add a little bit of, um, well, could stick uh, theoretically, you can just add a little bit of uh, grease. Obviously on this side we've got like two prongs, on the other side we've got uh, just the circle. Uh, if you need a bit more um, info on uh, the uh, kind of brake change process, like I said, mentioned before, we are going to film a full uh, brake change video. Uh, so I have a link for that uh, below, so you can go and check that out as well as, as you, if you like. Uh, I'm just going to put a little bit in there, a little bit on the rear one, just before I pop the caliper back in. And uh, these smaller bolts here are going to be torqued up to 35 newton meters, uh, which is 26 foot pounds. Next, we need to look at bleeding the uh, the brakes. Obviously, we've had this uh, this brake line open for a long time. It's so now going to have uh, air that's gone back uh, up. So we need to draw that back through. Uh, as we've uh, fitted a brand new caliper, uh, that had no fluid in it. So it's going to take a fair bit of fluid um, to uh, refill this caliper. So that's something that we need to be aware of uh, on the other end. So uh, what you need to do. Um, is keep an eye on the uh, reservoir uh, as we do this. We'll cover that in just a second. But what you're going to definitely going to need is uh, you're going to need to remove the uh, little rubber cap. Uh, this one didn't come with one, so I'm going to have to steal it off of the uh, original caliper and put it back on, which is a shame. Uh, but expose the uh, the uh, bleed nipple just here, and you're going to have to find a piece of uh, transparent, must be transparent, um, plastic tubing or rubber tubing. Uh, that will give a nice snug fit um, over there. The reason that it needs to be tr transparent is you need to see the air bubbles uh, actually travelling down this pipe here. Um, if, you, you know, if you use a black one you won't be able to see it and so it's about of no use wh whatsoever. But you need to be able to visibly, visibly see the, uh, the air bubbles so that you know uh, when the air is actually out of the system. Okay, so in a minute we're going to be um, uh, pumping the, uh, the brake fluid uh, through. As mentioned before, it would take quite a lot of fluid to get this done because the, uh, the caliper is completely dry. Uh, normally it wouldn't take so much if you were just uh, doing a brake bleed, uh, but obviously we're doing a caliper change. Uh, one thing to bear in mind is uh, when you're uh, pumping the, um, the brake, it's, it's literally going to be taking the uh, brake fluid from the reservoir drawing it through and drawing it through the caliper which is what we'll see with the uh, kind of the air bubble on the other side. And the thing you've got to be careful of is that there's enough fluid um, in here um, for the job that you're doing so you're, you may have to top this up um, a couple of times during the, uh, the process because what you don't want to do is to allow this to run dry because if, if you, all the fluid goes the next thing it will suck in it will suck in air and then you can get an airlock in your brake system 
and that can be a complete pain. It's completely avoidable, uh, you've just got to make sure you, you keep enough uh, fluid in here during the process. So what you want to do is kind of do a few pumps, run back, have a look, um, top it up if you need to, whatever you do, do not let uh, this run dry. Okay, so when you're pumping the uh, the brake pedal to draw the uh, the fluid uh, through the system um, and bleed it out the uh, out of the rear caliper, um, what you want to do is ideally have a second person do that for you because you want to be watching the air bubbles coming through on the on the pipe. Uh, that's the first thing, and the second thing, uh, remembering that there's um, the pressure's being released on the uh, the system because that uh, nipple's currently open. Uh, and so what you might find is the brake pedal is very loose. And what you don't want to do uh, when you're pumping the, uh, the brake pedal is just go down and slam it all the way down to the floor and pump it in that manner. Uh, the, in the um, uh, brake cylinder itself, you can kind of get a, a little kind of build up of kind of scum that builds up over, over the years. And when you slam that piston down to the floor, uh, that piston will go through and it will actually shatter all that kind of scum that may well be in the uh, in the cylinder there and that gets into the brake system. Uh, remember when you're actually braking the car you never put your foot down to the floor there's always resistance you don't actually press a brake pedal that far. So when you come to pump this don't jump in slam it to the floor nice short pumps you're better off doing four or five short pumps than one uh, one long one uh, for the sake of the uh, cylinder as I mentioned before. Uh, so just bear that in mind when we do this process. So just ensure uh, that, yeah, that it will move and uh, once you're uh, happy with it will move, it's best done with a ring spanner if you can. Put that on the top, pop your pipe on the, uh, on the top of that. And then we're going to uh, open this. So that's ready. You don't want to open it too much because obviously the, the whole pin will fall out. You want to open it to a point like so. So as you can see the uh, brake fluid started now so as we uh, continue to pump the brake you should see the air bubbles uh, coming through and what we're looking for is the end of those air bubbles. Now we'll just tighten the uh, tighten it back up before we remove our rubber hose. Like so, make sure it's nice and tight, but don't over tighten it. And carefully remove your rubber hose. So just a reminder: now we've put uh, pressure through the system. Just go back up to your main hose that we replaced earlier and just double check. Uh, that we haven't got any sort of leaks and it all looks uh, good and healthy up there, which it does. So now the caliper's back together, uh, what I'm going to do is that I had to, uh, during the uh, process, I had to top this up uh, twice. It was uh, taking quite a lot of fluid to fill that uh, caliper. So what I'm going to do now is just give it one final top up and obviously take it to the, uh, the max marker uh, right there. So once we're happy with everything, it's time to reattach the uh, handbrake cable. So, let's get so there we have it. We've got the uh, caliper and carrier uh, all set up back to um, factory spec. Uh, we've got a handbrake cable reattached. Uh, we've got our spring reattached. We've got our uh, cable. Uh, so the last thing to do is obviously our piston currently is still uh, rewound uh, as it's a brand new caliper. And so we're going to use the uh, pump the uh, brake pedal uh, now that we've closed the, uh, the bleed nipple and so it will be pressurised uh, to, uh, to close that gap up. So we'll do that now. The caliper has uh, come back out now, creating compression, uh, so we better just test the, uh, the handbrake action as well, make sure that's looking good. Oh, 
Okay, so that's the uh, the end of the video. Before you hop in your car and go shooting down the road at uh, uh, 60, 70 miles an hour, uh, you might want to take this just around your um, just around kind of your garden or just around the block, um, just to uh, make sure that you're happy uh, that the brakes are performing. Especially as we have opened the brake line and, and resealed it again, so you need to make sure that the brakes are operating uh, properly. Don't just jump in your car and go shooting down the road. Take it for a short test drive. Make sure that you're happy with everything. So that's it guys, hope you found this uh, video ho helpful, I hope it's enabled you to do this video yourself uh, and to save yourself some money. Um, so thank you for watching U Wrench. Uh, if you like this video please be sure to subscribe to our channel and please give this video a thumbs up on YouTube. Uh, thanks again and we'll see you on the next one.